Welcome back to my channel of learning. In today's episode, we'll learn about descriptive research design. So let's get started and learn together. So what is a descriptive research design? So a descriptive research is defined as a method that describes the characteristics of the phenomenon studied or a population. The what of the research subject is the focus of this method rather than the why of the research subject. This means that its primary focus is describing the nature of a demographic segment in not focusing on why if a certain phenomenon occurs. In the same boat, it is purely described as the subject of the research without minding in covering the entire phenomenon happens. For example, a clothing apparel brand that has just introduced in the town wants to understand the fashion trends among Lambunaunan buyers will conduct a demographic survey of the town, gather the population data, and then conduct this method on this demographic segment. So the study then will expose or or reveal its solution on what is or are the brands that are preferred by the people and will not cover investigation on why such brands are used by most of the Lambunaunon people. Now, there are characteristics of a good descriptive research. The first is that is quantitative research. When we say quantitative, that is, this means that descriptive research attempts to collect quantifiable information for statistical analysis of the population sample. They need numbers and controlled variables. This means that hence, the nature of the variables just like sex, grade level, and so on are not in the hands of the researcher meaning to say the researchers have no control over the variables. A basis for further research as well. So this can help future researchers to conduct different techniques pertaining to it. Cross-sectional studies. It means that different sectors belonging to the same group are, are studied. Now, how are we going to apply this method? So let's start with the defined or described the respondent characteristics. For example, understanding our Lambunaunan millennials on their clothing preferences. For example, that's our, our problem. So this method can be used in many different ways as well. So the main goal of close-ended questions is to appeal for a valid, intangible conclusion about the respondents, such as their behavior, attitude, uh, and everything that pertains to characters. So in that example, for example, Lambu Down and Millennials on their clothing brand preferences, we are going to describe and define our characteristics based on their behavior, based on their attitude towards their their preferences of a clothing apparel brand. Next, let's go to another. It measures the data trends. So for example, we have there when you use the demographic age to the age groups of 18 to 35 and then 35 to 51 on the newly designed clothing brand introduced in Lampuno. So in this case, you measure data trends over time when descriptive design statistical capabilities. Now, in the example, we use the demographic age to 18 to 34 and 35 to 51 on the newly designed clothing brand introduced in Lampunao. So if one of those groups, let's say, for example, uh, in the group of 1834, uh, doesn't want or disregard the new brand, so it gives the researchers of what clothes are likely preferred and what is not. Next, 
Next is better conduct comparisons. Now let's take it for example, the clothing of our commonly preferred by Lambunaunans. So let's say the same demographic questions like age, income, gender, and so on can be used in creating surveys that measure, for example, of the clothing apparel commonly preferred by Lambunaunans. This way, it will help you know and understand what side or parts of the apparel is appealing to the population of your respondents, particularly in Lambunau. In Lambunau. So there, you should have a comparison. Of course, you need to validate existing conditions. So you can validate any prevailing conditions that may be predominant in a certain group or population. So what are the methods in descriptive research? But before there, uh, but before that, let me uh, emphasize this to you that in my next video episode, feel free to comment on what topics that you want me to make and I'll make it in my list of episodes the next time. Now, there are methods in the script of research. The first, and that is very common, and you are, I know you are all particular with observation, or that is observational method. So from the many different perspectives, this method is the most effective to conduct descriptive research. And researchers make use of both qualitative and quantitative observations. Next, we have case study or the case study method. So a case stud studies, I mean, involve in-depth research and study of individuals or groups. This method can lead to hypothesis and widen a further scope of studying certain phenomenon. But this should not be used to determine cause and effect, which could form a bias on the researcher's part. Take note of that. Survey research. So in survey research, respondents answer through surveys or questionnaires or polls. The survey method can be conducted online or offline. Online survey, which is now widely used in our present situation, just like, for example, we use the Google Forms for our survey questionnaires. Uh, since we are now facing a present situation that are sensitive enough and um, talks about our um, safety. So these are the methods that we can use in conducting a descriptive research. Take note, all of these, this, these, these tips or, or, or learning can be used by you if you are uh, wanted, to, if you wanted, I mean, to, to, to make a research in the future that is on the res descriptive research design. So thank you for for watching. I hope that you have learned something about a descriptive research design, which is widely and commonly used by most of the researchers of today. Thank you and goodbye.